Hey, what's up, nerds? It is Paul at Radio Free Hammer Hall. Today, I want to do a bit of a dive into my experiences in 4th edition so far with Maggot Can of Nurgle. Um, I've played uh, two big events with it now and um, some other games, and I, uh, I'm i figuring out what to do with it, I think. Um, it seems like there's been some struggle with figuring out what's good in this particular army. It's, I think, less than obvious, um, but maybe from anchoring on what you wanted to do in previous editions. So I thought I would get into uh, you know, what the new play style is like and, you know, from my perspective, what winners and losers are to what that is and also uh, take a look at uh, a sample list. So. In the past, this army was full of Johnny tricks, right? Like these clever plays, like the Glotkin charging uh, in your opponent's movement phase. And before that, there was Sloppy Bile Piper preventing pylons and doing shenanigans with that. Um, you know, in the second edition book, it was, uh, you know, doing shenanigans with trees and those sorts of things, you know, catapulting yourself across the board unexpectedly. So those things are predominantly not here anymore. We're not really breaking the rules that much. So we have to fall back to the other big thing that Nurgle is really all about. And I think they're focusing on the thing that is more stereotypically a Nurgle characteristic, just being a very grindy army that is very hard to get through. Um, so that theme really remains in the army, that you're just slowly grinding your opponent down, moving up the board slowly and methodically, and, um, you know, healing, being durable, debuffing enemy attacks, and just playing the attrition game to the end. So looking at that idea, uh, let's take a look at our artifacts and heroic traits and all that that are leaning into this. Uh, number one artifact, uh, the Wither Stave. Um, the uh, hero that has that, if your opponent charges them, you roll a die on a four plus the enemy unit strikes last this turn. So it gives you an opportunity to take a swing at the enemy and, you know, hopefully decrease their offensive power uh, before they get a chance to attack you. Uh, for heroic traits, uh, Grandfather's Blessing lets you heal D6 at the end of every turn if you're in combat with a diseased enemy. And you can reorder or just order your uh your uh actions at the end of the turn so that you put the disease on something first then you use this heal ability after that um fleshy abundance this is your unlimited spell and it is really good um if the unit it targets is damaged it heals them d3 or if you're undamaged then your opponent is minus one to wound that unit. So either you're healing or preventing damage. Uh, one of the other spells in the lore, Magnificent Bubos, uh, it makes among, uh, you know, it looks like the majority of text goes to, you know, enemy hero is minus one to cast and pray and all of that stuff. The big thing is that the hero becomes minus one to hit. and with just the absolute pervasiveness of heroes that either are monsters or are riding monsters, that can be a major hit to their offensive power. Uh, and then in our uh, manifestation lore, I've been liking to take primal energy so that we can get endless life swarm and heal another, another three every turn. So, all of those together, you see that this is a lot of debuff the enemy and heal yourself and prevent damage coming at you. 
So units that I think are big winners that I like to be using a lot. Uh, Rodigus in this edition I think is great. He has plus one to cast, which is um, really, really useful. Um, it lets you, you know, just basically when you're off turn casting, you get to just kind of cast on your flat uh, ordinary casting cost rather than um, really suffering that big minus one. It The minus one really hurts. But if you're naturally plus one, it kind of negates that. All of your spells are on sevens in this army, which is, you know, Nurgle's number, but can be unreliable to get. But if he's on a plus one, that means you're getting off, you know, one fleshy abundance every turn pretty easily on a six. Um, also, his spell on his War Scroll, Deluge of Nurgle, uh, if you are, again, in combat with a diseased enemy, um, then you uh, are healing d3 and then you're also doing d3 mortal damage to any enemies that have disease on them so you're grinding down your enemy and you're healing back yourself so that also it looks like it casts on an eight but because Rodigus has the plus one he's really casting it on a seven effectively when you're casting on your turn um Morbidex twice born. He heals half of the damage that he's taken at the end of every turn. Uh, and also if he has nurglings nearby, he uh, prevents the first point of damage to those nurglings at the end of each phase. So that is uh, potentially preventing a lot of damage to your nurglings, which also uh, we'll see, I think on the next slide that they're, they heal three at the end of every turn, you know, effectively returning them back to, uh, you have the last model in there at full strength. So that is very valuable. Great unclean one. Well, very valuable if you value Nurglings. Um, personally, I don't, but we'll look at that. Um, great unclean one. He lets you return uh, a unit of Plague Bearers to the battlefield uh, on a four up on a D6. Uh, you return half the unit of Plague Bearers. This is sort of the thing that's like replacing summoning in this army. And um, I haven't actually pulled this off yet because um, your plague bearers just don't die a lot. Uh, they're a very grindy unit. But, you know, if your opponent manages to bust through them, uh, getting them back will be very frustrating for your opponent. Um, Horticulus Slimux, he pulls the same sort of trick with your Beasts of Nurgle. Beasts of Nurgle do tend to die a lot. Uh, so. The, and they're also one of the more tricky sorts of units. Their ability is um, can do some shenanigans. Uh, but it returns a slain Beast of Nurgle on a 4+. plus. Definitely have done that a few times, although big picture, I'm not really uh, rating Horticulus Slimax that highly. Uh, Bloab Rotspawn, he has a uh, Rampage that can make enemies within 7 minutes inches of him minus one to hit for the turn on a roll of four plus sloppity bile piper can make your demon uh, one of your demon units minus one to hit uh that i believe is holy within 12 of him as i mentioned before your nurglings heal d3 every turn gut rot spume can make an enemy hero fight last um and it's only on a roll of three plus the major thing that you usually use Gut Rot Spume for is his uh, Slime Fleet ability, being able to deploy a unit in reserve and then uh, bring them on the battlefield edge uh, in your movement phase. Uh, then, uh, it, so I think it's, it, he's pointed with that in mind, I think. So just using him for the enemy infantry hero strike last ability is not quite as valuable because you're just not going to do it that often, but it, you know, it might be something worth playing around with, like not even bothering using the slime fleet. Uh, Plague bearers also minus one to hit in enemy shooting. So uh, definitely makes them more durable. Um, you know, it, you can use them as like chaff or screen getting up front and, you know, because they're going to be uh, harder to hit in shooting, you know, your opponent can't, effectively clear them away as much so they're going to be uh, more likely to prevent charges all right some of my favorites um for putting in lists here 
Uh, obviously, the Great Unclean One, arming him with the Wither Stave, making opponents fight last if they charge him, and then giving him Grandfather's Blessing so that he's potentially healing D6 every turn. He's really powerful. He's a Wizard 2, so he's casting two spells a turn. He definitely hits hard. Um, he's probably decreased a bit in power compared to the 3rd edition book, but um, a lot of things are powered down in this edition, so... Um, I think it kind of evens out, so he's still a solid hammer. Um, he has a spell that spreads more disease, which is going to give you a lot more ablative wounds on the enemy, and he can bring back plague bearers. Uh, he's also up to 20 wounds now, or 20 health, so he can really take a punch. You know, four up save, five up ward, uh, doing lots of healing. Um, he's really hard to take down. Rodigus also a wizard too, but he has that plus one to cast. He's also uh, pretty strong on offense, one of your better offensive pieces. Uh, and then his Deluge of Nurgle can heal, it can do damage, he can cast um, uh, Fleshy Abundance to uh, do more healing and prevent more damage that way. Uh, he's just a great inclusion. Sloppity Bile Piper, obviously, he's minus one to hit. The other really nice thing about Sloppity Bile Piper is that he doesn't have to be a drop. He can be included in uh, some of your regiments to, uh, you know, keep you on a nice uh, low, tight drop. Um, then we have some other supporting demon units. Your Plague Bearers, they're a solid anvil. And Beasts of Nurgle, they can kind of... They're good at going around the edges to get battle tactics and harass your opponent. Um, their ability lets them char like run in charge and retreat in charge and um, charge like counter charge on your opponent's turn. Just by the way it's worded, it's um, not obvious on the face that you can do that, but if you you know, take a look back at the core rules and then look at the ability on his scroll. That is what it really is doing for you. Um, and then your plague drones, I think those can be very useful. They also can retreat and charge, which is a really strong ability. They're not doing a ton of damage, but they're going to be, you know, a unit of them is 15 wounds getting in your opponent's way, which is really solid. They're one of your more mobile pieces, flying and moving eight. So they're getting around the board pretty well. Uh, and then I like to take Primal Energy, mainly for Life Swarm. Uh, not really a lot of other things. All right, the misses. The things that I uh, don't like as much or think are generally traps. The Glotkin is your most expensive piece, and his countercharge ability looks great, I still haven't actually been able to pull it off. Um, I've been able to get off a charge just with Glotkin, but um, you know, getting those two other free counter charges that can come along with him, he just I've never had him take anybody else in. Uh, so I think um, he is your hardest hitter in this army for sure. Um, so he still has potential as a hammer, but I... I just feel like he's overcosted for what he's doing and his ability to um, uh, countercharge with other units for free, I think is uh, it looks better on paper than it actually is. Puscoil Blight Lords. I've played with these a bunch now. Um, it looks like what you want to do with these guys, like they're your standard cavalry now. They get bonuses when they charge. And you would think that's good, but... Um, they just don't pack enough punch to really take things out, which is really feels like what you want to do with them. So with their the thing that they're doing in their role not hitting as well as you want it to, um, then you're left with them just being, uh you know, kind of limp and lifeless and just kind of a, an anvil in your opponent's way. Um, but a very expensive one at 250 points for two of these guys. So I don't really like it that much. Um, maybe there's some gas in the engine somewhere, but I'm just not digging it too much. Um, the, the Feculent Gnarlmaw, 
his ability, its ability looks good, right? You know, being able to put extra disease on things without even needing to be in combat with them. And uh, the, the problem is that with a lot of these terrain pieces and your um, manifestations, they're kind of giving your opponent charges. Um, it feels like they want to get in the way and, you know, spread more disease. It's also getting in your way. And, you know, that potential to spread extra disease is just not that strong. Um, Horticulus Slimex, in the same sense, you know, the big thing he can do is just keep planting more trees. But if your trees aren't valuable, then Horticulus isn't that valuable. Um, and then similarly, taking the Nurgle's Menagerie sub-faction, uh, just starting with an extra tree, like why, if your trees aren't great, then that's a trap. So... And then th we do have other really good options for sub-factions. So, like, why would you ever do that? Um, it looks good on paper. It's just a trap, I think. You know, take your Feculent Gnarl. I I'm almost at a point where I don't even want to take a Feculent Gnarl Maw because it is optional. Um, it's just not doing anything for me. Um, I don't really like it. Nerglings, they used to have that Deep Strike ability, and they don't... They just don't have it anymore. And so they're a very slow little grindy unit and they're cheap, but I'm, they just don't really do anything at all. Um, the mortal heroes in general, I've been finding are trash. Like even the, um, uh, your like blow ab rot spawn and, uh, orgots and morbid decks. Um, they're just not as strong as you want them to be. They're not hitting that hard. And they're generally not quite as defensive as you want them to be. And Bloab is really kind of, it's hard to get him to do what you want him to do. Again, it's another one that like on paper, it looks pretty good, but for the price you're paying for it, especially, it's just not getting there. All right. So the things that are fine, uh, this is my third attempt to record this slide. So I'm going to go quickly because I'm annoyed. Um, Blight Kings, they're okay. They can put out a half decent amount of damage. They're good on defense. They're pretty good at holding objectives. The problem is they're basically functioning in the same role as your Plague Bearers, and the Plague Bearers are cheaper to do basically the same job, and they're more bodies. They have a higher control score on an objective than the Blight Kings do. So, um, you know, it they're significantly more expensive than the plague bearers so i would rather go with plague bearers most of the time rotmeyer creed they're not throwing extra disease around which is really the thing that i would like to see them do but they are potentially hitting your opponent with disease at range hitting you know a hero or something like that um and so again they're okay um if you've got a weird amount of points in the end of the list then they're not bad to stick in there but uh, they're not something that I would go into list writing and say, oh, I got to stick my Rock Meyer Creed in there. Uh, Spoilpox Scrivener, he only targets Plague Bearers, but he does give them a little bit of an offensive edge. Uh, um, the plus one to save is okay, but you're starting on a six up save. So going to a five up is still not doing anything for you. Uh, he's really cheap. He is one of the bonus heroes, so he can go into a regiment rather than having to be the hero leading a regiment. So it is kind of a, a little bit of uh, uh, an item in his favor. Still not great, though. All right. All right, so let's look at a sample list here. Um, this is using Affliction Syst that lets you redeploy your uh, Plague Drones at the beginning of, uh, or at, I'm sorry, at the end of deployment, at the beginning of the game, uh, taking primal energy for a manifestation lore. Uh, our general is going to be Rodigus. Uh, he's got two units of plague drones to uh, have the affliction cyst, uh, be able to move those. Really good for grabbing uh, early battle tactics. Uh, you can take the flanks on the first turn, like guaranteed. So definitely... A solid choice for that and then they're mobile enough to get them back into the action afterward um i've got a rotmeyer creed unit in here that's really just because you know you'll see i'm at exactly 2000 points 
So I would have wanted to fit in something else, but they, they were really the best option I had with 130 points left over. Uh, also in here, I've got a Sloppy Bile Piper. He's going to serve that uh, roll to give you um, minus one to hit uh, from enemy attacks. Uh, my second regiment is led by a Great Unclean One. He's got Grandfather's Blessing, so he's healing that D6. Um, he's got the weather, weather stave to uh, make uh, enemy units fight last when they charge in. And then I've got three units of plague bearers. So what am I doing with these units? Um, plague drones are really your things that are going to do good flying around. Um, they can retreat and charge so they can kind of like stick and move, tie up the enemy in key places. They're reasonably durable. Um, uh, you know, 15 wounds on a five up save and uh, five up ward is not bad. Um, so they're really good for grabbing battle tactics and just generally tying your opponent up and being a nuisance. Um, Rottmeyer Creed, as I said, it was it, it, it was the best option with the points that I had left over. Um, you know, Rodigus and your great unclean one are really your hammer units that are going to grind your opponent down. Um, as well as being your casters, getting those important spells off to, you know, do more healing to yourself as well as getting more damage onto the enemy um, and, you know, doing some other utility things. Uh, and then three units of Plague Bearers, which are, um, they're going to be sitting on objectives, they're going to be holding their ground uh, against enemies coming in. Um, they do have a little bit of bite now with the Crit Mortals. So it, they're not terrible. Um, I probably would have taken another unit of Plague Bearers if I had the option. I uh, had that extra 10 points instead of taking the Rottmeyer Creed. But it is what it is. The big thing that uh, this army is really doing is healing and preventing damage from your opponent. So you've got Grandfather's Blessing on the Great Unclean One. He's healing you D6 a turn. Um... Rodigus with his Deluge of Nurgle is another D3. You're, you're going to be able to cast um, a Fleshy Abundance twice per turn for healing another D3 each. Um, so, And then you have Primal Energy to cast Life Swarm and heal you another three. All around, like that's a lot of healing. I've had a Great Unclean One be on just a, a handful of wounds left and then roll well on grandfather's blessing and then heal with uh, a variety of other things and it's like oh he's just about back to full so uh really it can be quite powerful um so overall i really like this your sloppy bile piper and your um oh my gosh i keep losing names uh fleshy abundance are giving you you know minus one to hit minus one to wound respectively um, you also have uh, Magnificent Bubos that's uh, potentially making your opponent minus one to hit on one of their key heroes. So we've got a lot going on here. We're very resilient. We have some mobility with the Plague Drones that's going to be uh, scoring battle tactics for you. Uh, and generally moving around and harassing your opponent and being annoying. Uh, the Rottmeyer Creed are present. Uh, and, you know, you've got Rodigus and the Great Unclean One, you know, doing your damage. They're, this list is not for beating down the enemy quickly. This is, you get in combat, you grind. You prevent your opponent from killing you. That's the really big thing, is that you're standing your ground, your opponent can't grind through you, and then the in the attrition game, you're um, going to get the edge on them and move up the field. You know, your struggle is going to be for, like, board position early in the game. You're going to have to grind them down and slowly move up the board. Um, your Plague Drones are going to give you a little flexibility to get across the board a little bit faster, but I think your main role with them is really going to be battle tactic oriented. Um, so, and, and potentially uh, tying up some key enemy pieces uh, as they move up the board, maybe hitting... Uh, enemy heroes in the backfield that are buffing things. Um, so, 
yeah, I mean, that's about it. I like this list a lot. I'm going to be experimenting with this. Haven't actually gotten it on the table yet, but I've used uh, most of these pieces with uh, a decent amount of success so far. Uh, and I really like it. I'm, you know, I'm not really 100% sure that overall that this is like the greatest play style in terms of your opponent having a good game. Uh, this is going to be very frustrating to play against. I think there's going to be a lot of people that don't like this. And because you're not hitting that hard, you, you, this is just not like, it's not that fun to play either. <laughs> um, unless like you take joy in not dying um, in watching your opponent whiff at you or hit you and then heal back. Um, personally, that's just not something that I enjoy that much. So, um, you know, I, I think this isn't going to win you sportsmanship uh, awards for sure. But uh, I think this may be one of the, the kind of like the strategy that's going to be the way to go with Magikin right now anyway. And we'll see what it brings in the future. Um, obviously, I need to test this more, but uh, that's going to be it for now, guys. Uh, hope you enjoy. Questions and comments you can drop down below. Like, subscribe, and don't forget to uh, check out Dice Trade Depot link and uh, discount code down in the description. So uh, grab your awesome dice trays from them with custom logos on it. Um, that's going to be it. I'll talk to you guys later.